Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Janis Simonoulidis, and I want to welcome you to this online event on the Slovenia's president, uh, priorities for the presidency of the council. We are very happy to have with us today uh, Slovenia's uh, permanent representative to the EU, Ambassador Itzog Jark, uh, who has been in this position uh, since 2019. So a warm welcome to you, and it's great that you have found the time to join us. Um, in less than four weeks, uh, Slovenia will assume the council presidency for the second time since the country joined the European Union in 2004. Um, and the first time it had uh, the presidency was in 2008, which uh, from today's perspective seems like ages ago. And we were living in a different world, it seems then, um, when we had not yet entered the different chapters of what would call, what could now in retrospect call something which feels like a perma crisis. Um, but as we all know, this is a very special presidency. It's the fourth council presidency in COVID-19 times. And its particular significance of the upcoming presidency and the strong interest in it is also manifested in the fact that uh, today we have almost uh, 500 people who have registered for this event. Um, we always have high numbers when it comes to a presidency briefing, but this number is particularly high. And it does not only show the strong interest in the upcoming presidency, I think it also shows the high expectations with respect to the Slovenian presidency. Um, because although we are still uh, in a COVID-19 reality, we are all also preparing uh, for a post-COVID-19 reality. And at the June European Council meeting in a couple of weeks, there will also be a debate on the lessons learned uh, from this crisis. Um, and the Commission will also prepare a paper for that. So in many ways, I would say that um, the Slovenian presidency is a transition presidency. Uh, trans a transition from the COVID-19 realities to a post-COVID-19 world, which we all still do not know what it will look like. Um, and the motto, the slogan of the Slovenian presidency is together, resilient Europe. And if you look into the list of issues on the agenda for the upcoming six next months, it is a very long list. Let me just mention some uh, in an erratic form. Implementation of next generation EU work on a European health union, cyber resilience, accelerating the green and digital transition, strengthening transatlantic relations with the Biden administration, the future of Schengen, the um, new pact on migration and asylum, and the conference on the future of Europe, which will actually start during the Slovenian presidency. So that is already a long list, but the list is even longer. And I think that Ambassador York will help us to put uh, more coherence into uh, this long list by explaining what the priorities of the Slovenian presidency will look like over the upcoming six months. In terms of orchestration, we have agreed that the ambassador would start off uh, with presenting the priorities. I think that will take him around uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, then I will, in order to have an icebreaker, engage him in a short exchange uh, before we open for the second half of this event, which is opening the floor to all of you for questions and comments related to the Slovenian Council Presidency. Um, and given that we are such a high number, I would kindly ask you when engaging with us to write your questions in a written form. So click on the question button, write your question, hit the enter button and try to be uh, as brief as possible. I always say the length of a tweet would be very helpful because I will try to oversee all the questions which you're posing to group them also. So that will make my life easier. And I will try to take as many questions as possible. If I cannot take all of them because we really have to end on time at four o'clock, then please already excuse me for that. So with these words of introduction in terms of the potential content and the framework of the presidency and the orchestration, I would like to hand over now to Ambassador to you um, for your introduction. And thanks again for being with us. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for hosting me and, 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 and also for a very good uh, introduction. This is uh, exactly the uh, introduction which fits uh, onto our um, program. Um, and as, as you mentioned, it is really about the uh, present crisis and, and past crisis and it, 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 it's about increasing uh, resilience and that's the uh, main motto of it. And uh, 
Uh, as you mentioned, our slogan is uh, together, resilient Europe, and this is the way how we think we shall, we shall do it together. Um, so, uh, as I said, our main, our, is, our main aim is to contribute to a solution finding on, on main uh, challenges we are facing in Europe, either the present one or, or, or few uh, from from the past, including the economic crisis, the uh, migration waves, and and, and of course uh, geopolitical issues. Um, the uh, main fields where we would like to focus when we are talking about resilience uh, would be, of course, EU recovery, uh, economic recovery, uh, reinforcing resilience. Uh, would be also, of course, reflection on the future of Europe. We'll be strengthening the rule of law values. It will be increasing security in, and stability in the European uh, neighborhood. And of course, there are different uh, also fields uh, uh, of dossiers or, or sectoral policies where we would like to focus, especially in this is health, economic energy, climate, and uh, cyber. Um, in the beginning, I would also like to mention that we are part of the TRIO. Uh, our program is uh, encompassing uh, uh, the TRIO elements. Uh, we are working together. And I'm using this opportunity to thank our German and Portuguese colleague for the uh, hard work, uh, but also excellent work. Uh, but I would also like to say here that <clears throat> we are working very closely also with the next presidency, this is French presidency, uh, with all institutions and of course with our main stakeholders, which are of course the uh, other member states. We want to do our uh, job in a uh, pragmatic, efficient way, and we want to be uh, honest uh, in blocking uh, deals uh, uh, which will be many, we hope. We, we think that we will be working on over about 150 of them. <clears throat> if I stay with the, with the, with the numbers, uh, we will organize something like uh, 1,600 working meetings in Brussels. We will have uh, 50 uh, ministerial meetings uh, or high level in Brussels, Luxembourg and Strasbourg. And we plan also to have 19 uh, meetings of that level in Slovenia and in Slovenia all together of around 150 meetings. So this, this we think is also our contribution to normalization of, of, of economic, social life, connectivity in, in, in Europe, which as you mentioned, uh, Slovenia, its uh, transitional presidency when it comes to this issue. Our first priority, so we say, it's called resilience, recovery, and strategic autonomy of the EU. So um, the focus on resilience to crisis, debate on open strategic autonomy, and recovery of the <clears throat> economy based on the digital and green, it's, it's in heart of it. Uh, we know, and, and a recent uh, crisis highlighted that uh, uh, we could do it uh, better together and uh, uh, better uh, on uh, if we understand the values of uh, solidarity and, and understanding <coughs> of each other. Uh, since the uh, pandemics have started and, and after many initial frustrations, uh, we think that many important steps have already been taken, uh, which improves the capability of EU to manage the effects of the COVID-19 related uh, crisis. Uh, we have strengthened the coordination in Commission, in the Council. We give additional authority where was necessary and uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, we will be soon discussing the lessons learned. And important lesson, the first one is, is that uh, we must prepare for potential future crises. Um, part of our efforts to increase EU resilience will, uh, to crisis will definitely be uh, on our preparedness to health-related threats. And, and here I'm mentioning the European Health Union 
and strengthening EU capacity to ensure availability of vaccines, medicines, and medical equipment. And uh, here, of course, I have to mention that uh, we will work hard on a new HERA uh, dossier, but also uh, on EMA and ECDC and cross-border dossier, so to, uh, to, to finalize them as soon as uh, uh, possible. Um, we, a special, our focus be, will be on the crisis. They have a transboundary uh, effect. And, and here, of course, we have to uh, cooperate uh, together. Um, as you know, lessons learned document will be discussed uh, at the level of European Council. And uh, we think that uh, uh, the Commission overview and the subsequent uh, discussions uh, 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 would be important and would follow in different council uh, formats. Uh, we, we think that we will have it at the GAC level, and uh, it could be that we will also discuss the possibility or, or to have the council conclusions on this matter uh, towards the end of our presidency. Uh, Slovenia will pay a special attention to uh, strengthening of uh, cyber resilience, uh, especially uh, in uh, events of possible large-scale cyber attacks. Uh, we, we will, of course, and perhaps I should have mentioned that in the first place, a special uh, focus will be given, especially in July, but also later on, to the timely adoption and quick implementation of recovery and resilience plans the member states have sent to, to European Commission. We will do utmost that these plans uh, uh, um, adopted in the council and, and, and implemented uh, as soon as possible. This is this, and Slovenian presidency should do utmost to, to um, facilitate this, this process. Of course, uh, to finish this, this uh, first priority, we are committed to um, uh, green transition and, and, and climate uh, uh, change uh, challenge. Uh, Fit for 55, which is coming in uh, July, will take lots of our energy and efforts. Uh, um, and then, of course, the same is for the digital service and market, uh, uh, digital market uh, dossier. Uh, one uh, dossier which is very important, also Vinia, which is hosting the UNICEF uh, Center of Artificial Intelligence, is artificial intelligence, which will be discussed in many uh, different working and political level at it is very uh, horizontal issue. Uh, so this is uh, very shortly on the first priority. The second priority is conference on the future of Europe. Slovenia will have here uh, again a kind of transitional role <laughs> as, as, you, as you know. Our uh, prime minister will be member of the presidency of the conference and thus ensuring the appropriate uh, role of the council and its uh, member states. Um, our main aim is uh, the conference in this time is to engage and promote a comprehensive debate with European citizens about uh, what kind of Europe we want to live in and also about the present and, and future issues we have to address. Uh, in Slovenia, we will, go, we will organize a series of events, <clears throat> including high level events, uh, fostering an, an inclusive uh, debate on, on, on the main issues. Uh, we will devote uh, the, the traditional BLED strategic forum uh, to this discussion uh, in the beginning of September uh, in three panels, including uh, three presidents, uh, um, um, probably of the European institutions and some European leaders, but also together with the youth, NGOs and, and, and academia. And uh, later in October, we will um, also invite some most prominent former European leaders to address this issue. And of course, towards the end of this year, we will do everything necessary to pass the uh, file to the next French presidency. Uh, and of course, in between uh, to inform our colleagues in council on developments. Um, the third um, uh, priority is um, union of the European way of life, rule of law, and equal criteria for all. Uh, as you know, uh, the presidency uh, will, based on European Commission annual report, which is coming in July on rule of law, 
uh, hold an annual dialogue in the Council, uh, which includes a general debate on the state of rule of law in the EU, but also country-specific debate. Uh, the annual uh, dialogue will be conducted in a manner that, that unites member states in a community of European values and uh, unite us also in, in, in effort to learn from each other. Uh, through constructive dialogue, uh, Slovenia will uh, contribute to promote a culture of the rule of law and work towards a better understanding also of different systems in the member states. Um, we will uh, draw also attention to the importance of uh, preserving the European way of life, uh, which is all but self-evident and is based on respect for personal dignity, freedom and fundamental rights and as well on compliance with the rules and enforcement of obligations. And this is something which is again a horizontal issue. issue. Uh, you, you could see it in uh, just this dossier, but also others dossier. And Slovenian presidency will also draw necessary attention to the need to uh, confront negative uh, demographic trends in the European Union. Um, last but not uh, least, of course, uh, priority it's a credible and uh, secure European Union capable of ensuring security and stability in its uh, neighborhood. Uh, of course, as you know, much better than I do, um, the role of the presidency is now to support the high representatives of the Union for Foreign Affairs and also uh, uh, Peck and so, and others on the, on the foreign affairs issues. Um, Slovenian presidency will, will, will contribute to the effective and uh, promotion of the EU interests and values in the world. We think that um, here, of course, uh, it's very important issue is the promotion of the transatlantic agenda. And uh, we will work hard on, on it to resolve the outstanding issue and to, uh, to uh, make uh, possible uh, um, um, uh, to, to, to go uh, work on new, um, uh, new uh, ideas and, and developments. Equally important for us, of course, is the uh, support to the countries of uh, Western Balkans towards the uh, European integration. Uh, we will uh, direct the Council uh, to work uh, towards continuing the process of EU enlargement. Um, this will be done, of course, in the line with the renewed enlargement methodology. And uh, we hope that this will contribute to foster the European perspective of the countries in the region. Uh, we will also focus our efforts on, on economic recovery in the Western Balkans and, and uh, we'll work also to strengthen uh, the region's resilience when it comes to health, cybersecurity, connectivity, uh, implementing green agenda, uh, but also to ensure a positive perspective for, for young people. And uh, uh, these uh, topics, uh, and perhaps some more, uh, will be also discussed at the EU Western Balkan Summit, which is um, also to be taking place in Slovenia in October. Um, during our presidency, um, uh, we will, uh, of course, uh, put um, all necessary efforts to strengthen the security of the European Union, and uh, which is again a horizontal issue and will be discussing uh, different dossiers, as we think security is prerequisite for the uh, for the prosperity. Um, then, um, uh, as you know, uh, there will be a discussion about the, the future of the Schengen regime, also based on the communication and the two new proposals. Um, Slovenia will uh, focus um, on the efforts to establish a strong and, and, and robust Schengen area, which is well functioning, as we, we, we believe this is in the interest of all member states. Uh, last but not least, uh, we need that we could do at least um, some steps when it comes to uh, migratory uh, issues and, and pact on migration and, and asylum. We are looking forward to, to continue working, especially on the uh, dossier on asylum agency, but also on the uh, Eurodac uh, uh, database. Uh, and also on the external dimension of, of, the, of, of, of this uh, migration, migration pact. If you allow me at the end, 
uh, I will very briefly go just to uh, one or two issues. We think it's very important also on, on different dossiers. Uh, one, it's trade. Uh, on the trade, uh, Slovenia will promote open strategic autonomy, and we think it's very important that uh, EU stays uh, credible uh, to international partners and to promote international cooperation and also to have in this regard um, a successful WTO ministerial conference, which is taking place in December in, 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 um, in, in Geneva. Uh, and that would, of course, reinforce the multilateral um, uh, uh, setting uh, in, 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 um, in this so important uh, field of cooperation, international cooperation. In the financial services, um, we will be uh, working on the anti-money laundering and terrorist financing uh, dossier, uh, but also on the crypto assets dossier uh, and Solvency II and uh, Basel uh, III standards. Um, we don't know uh, yet, as we are waiting uh, on concrete proposals when it comes to digital levy and so-called CBAM, uh, uh, file uh, which tackles the um, very important uh, dossiers uh, for the also the future of the EU in this regard. And in justice, we will focus on fundamental um, um, uh, rights, uh, but also um, um, very important uh, hate speech and 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 and, and other. Um, and other illegal activities on the on the um, on the web, uh, and we will discuss, as I said, also the issues of of artificial intelligence in in, in this regard. Um, so, of course, we will have uh, be contributing to many international um, summits, and so uh, we could discuss this later. One of them is Eastern Partnership, uh, probably, and, and 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 many many others. So that would be uh, for the beginning from my side. I hope I was not too long, but it's, as you said, it's very demanding agenda. Um, it's Slovenia is in a sense um, uh, transitory uh, uh, presidency uh, when it comes to coming back to normalization. And our hope is that we will, with our work, contribute to it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. You were not at all too long. Um, a long list, an impressive list, and you also started with numbers which shows of how much work is ahead in terms of your presidency, but also the different fields you mentioned from uh, recovery, resilience, the future of Europe debate, uh, values, uh, the rule of law, stability in the neighborhood, all the sectoral files you mentioned. So an impressive long list of things that uh, you will have to cover and deal with uh, during the upcoming six uh, months in, a, as you said, pragmatic an efficient way, which I think in difficult times is the ones we are living through. Pragmatic and efficient often is the best way of being as ambition as ambitious as one can. Uh, now, I already see that there are some um, questions uh, which are coming in, but uh, let me uh, get ourselves started with the second part um, of our event uh, by myself posing a question to you. And I'll start with a general one, which relates to the uh, role of the uh, council presidency in general. Um, my impression is that um, in uh, COVID-19 times, um, the role of the uh, council rotating presidency has become more important than it was uh, before. We've gone through more than 10 years of the Lisbon Treaty reality, so we've gone through different phases also of the role of the rotating presidency. And my impression is that um, it has become more important uh, on, in these difficult times for two main reasons. Um, one is the, the magnitude of the challenges related uh, to the crisis, which put pressure uh, on all of us. And the second is that um, negotiations among, but also within institutions require a strong role of the uh, council presidency. Um, you mentioned the need to be an honest broker, which I fully subscribe. But I think I would add, I would say an honest broker with leadership qualities, because if you want to progress, you also not only brokered uh, deals uh, and agreements, but also show the way. Do you agree with that assessment that um, the rotating presidency maybe is now even more important uh, than it had been before the crisis? 
Yes, I, I think so. During the, uh, I would I would agree with you. During the crisis, uh, as you know, um, uh, Corepe, uh, so the Committee of Ambassadors um, uh, uh, was um, uh, um, not ceasing its its in person meetings, and 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 we were uh, having. Um, 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 practically every week, um, uh, two or more meetings, um, and and we were discussing uh, 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 most uh, uh, critical issues. And, and last year was very important, uh, as you could imagine. Lots of efforts and coordination was necessary to uh, form the next generation uh, package and uh, to finish the uh, negotiations on. Um, multi-annual financial framework and uh, and many others, and to uh, start, of course, to 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 design the response of of uh, us to health and other crises. So this would not be, of course, possible without of um, a very uh, intense uh, engagement of of um, um, uh, council and 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 uh, of course with that member states and um, due to the uh, lack of travels and uh, possibility to to have physical meetings of member states here in Brussels of course um, a lot of of um, a task uh, uh, was given to us also when it comes to direct contact with our governments and other stakeholders so that was also very important, um, very important task. I, I think um, uh, the situation is, is, is changing gradually, but not completely. We believe that at least uh, by uh, including September, we will be meeting um, um, uh, in a presence of limited uh, um, numbers, uh, but we will have, of course, more uh, physical meetings when it comes uh, to political level. And then for the fall, we would see uh, where we are. But yes, I, I agree with your 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 uh, your uh, your thinking. Very good. Um, I think we have been very successful in um, breaking the ice because we have a lot of questions uh, which are coming in. So let me start, and if you allow me to do so, I will take two or three at a time so that we can take as many as as possible. Um, the first one uh, comes from uh, Josefine Liebel, and it relates to uh, the new pact on migration and asylum. And the question uh, which she is posing is uh, whether the um, last week's uh, signal from the five Mediterranean member states on the EU asylum agency has changed the strategy of the Slovenian presidency. That's the first question. A second question uh, relates to um, enlargement. Um, and uh, this comes from Tanya Milewska, who says that enlargement has stalled uh, for years, um, and especially since the COVID uh, crisis. And now she's referring to the chances for North Macedonia to start accessing those negotiations in June, which she thinks is very slim due to the Bulgarian veto, which has been denounced by a number of member states as unprincipled, she says. Um, and now she's asking, um, not starting the negotiations, uh, she says, will also endanger the PRESPA agreement with Greece and send the wrong signal to the rest of the regions in terms of solving bilateral problems. Um, so the question she's posing is, is restoring the EU's credibility in North Macedonia and in the Western Balkan a concern for your presidency? You were referring to issues related to, your enlargement, to enlargement. And if so, how do you plan to go about that issue in concrete terms? Let's take these two questions first on the new pact and on enlargement and then go on. Thank you very much uh, for these um, uh, questions. Um, on the migration pact, um, I was present uh, on Tuesday in, in, uh, in uh, Luxembourg when all this um, news came about and uh, I was um, informed uh, um, around um, many activities um, uh, between Med5 and, and other uh, stakeholders on, on this issue. And, and, and I think this is a very uh, good sign, um, uh, at least from two reasons. First of all, uh, we need um, uh, a more um, reinforced and, 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 and um, uh, more service of the asylum agency on spot. Um, this, I think, it's 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 understanding of of, of, of all, especially frontline member states, and, and, and we think that 
uh, Malta based agencies is, is working fine, and but it has certain limitations. So it's good that it's re reinforced. Um, so it's this is a good um, uh, step forward. Whether this have changed our our strategy? Well, our our strategy um, uh, was uh, uh, always that um, uh, we should. Um, um, try to uh, contribute uh, to move this uh, package um, uh, ahead. And if necessary, that um, uh, we have to concentrate on some outstanding dossiers where we could um, uh, see that the compromise is closed and one of them being uh, exactly the asylum agency. And the second one, it's uh, the Eurodac and this is the uh, this is the dossier which relates to um, uh, fingerprints uh, in another data uh, uh, database for identifying asylum seekers and, uh, and, and illegal uh, migrants. We, we also want to um, uh, work hardly, uh, hard on, on other dossiers. We think that there is a time now to perhaps um, uh, do a bit of both, still focus on the political level, but also work hard in the working groups and, and try to move uh, uh, the other dossiers as, as far as uh, uh, possible um, ahead. And, 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 and we have a good team here in Brussels and back home, which will uh, contribute to, uh, to it. Um, we will also be, uh, as I said, uh, focusing on the external uh, dimension of of the of the uh, of the pact uh, um, together with the uh, commission and the member states we are trying to um, here present the uh, the, um, the also the good examples how we could uh, be, be be solving the uh, the, the issue at the, the so-called external dimension so if i if i we calculate no. This is a good. Uh, this is a good sign. Uh, a sign in the right direction. Also, um, based on on two contacts I have had with the uh, other delegations, I think the last meeting uh, of the Home Ministers in Luxembourg um, tends to be productive, and uh, there was a, a, a mode of understanding or, or better understanding. So. Um, you know, I, I will not be uh, judging whether I could be, uh, whether we could be already the optimist or not, but, but definitely there, were, there are positive signs coming from that uh, meeting as well. So that I think uh, would be uh, um, on, on this, on the um, very important question on the Western Balkan. Uh, in Northern Macedonia, um, Republic of Northern Macedonia, of course, um, Slovenia uh, was as a country of, of region has really a keen um, interest to uh, promote the uh, integration of uh, Western uh, Balkan countries into the European Union. And uh, of course, to, uh, to, uh, to also uh, uh, move the deadlock uh, between uh, Bulgaria and uh, Northern Macedonia on, on this issue. Uh, we are very grateful to uh, the uh, diplomatic work of, of uh, Portugal in this respect. Uh, as far as I know, issue might be discussed next week at the corporate level uh, as well. Uh, and it is in the, um, our presidency plan uh, to have the um, IGC with, with both countries, that is Republic of Northern Macedonia and, and Albania, uh, as soon as we, we overcome uh, uh, this um, issue in the, in the Council. So um, yes, very, very much uh, positive and very much looking forward to, to have the IGC as soon as possible. Very good. Um, I'll take two more questions now. The first one coming from Todd Buell. Um, and he's referring to uh, the digital levy, which I think you mentioned also in your, in your introduction, uh, which the commission is due to announce in July. And his question is, does Slovenia believe it's a good idea to introduce a digital levy just as the OECD is, um, is supposed to find a global tax deal? And, and what risk is there of US retaliation, he asks. Um, and he's a journalist from Law360. 
another question relates to um, circular economy. It comes from Victor de Lalleux, who is asking what role will circular economy um, play during the Slovenian presidency? Will Slovenia put forward priorities taking into consideration the Commission's new circular economy action plans? So these are two additional questions before we go on to the next. If you take these, please, thank you. Thank you for questions on the digital level, of course, um, uh, we are in the waiting mood <laughs> at the moment here because we are waiting, first of all, the uh, forthcoming proposal uh, also as a known uh, resources announced by the Commission. As you know, it is scheduled for the mid of July. Uh, if it comes and when it comes, uh, and, and of course, uh, depends in which manner, uh, this dossier will have our highest priority um, uh, since it uh, might serve a, a dual uh, purpose. Um, first, we will have a balance the tax burden and ensure that the uh, profits uh, of, of companies are appropriately taxed. And secondly, uh, it will, it should, as, as you know uh, from the European Council conclusions, also represents a new owner source and it's set to be implemented by member states in 2023. Now, of course, um, we understood that there were, there were uh, uh, some developments in, in G5. I understood that this uh, issue shall, should be also addressed at the G20 and, and OECD. So I guess that um, all this process might be uh, prolonged in a way uh, it is in uh, Slovenian interest of interest, of course, to have uh, uh, to have a wide uh, international uh, understanding of, of this issue and also to have, of course, uh, everything in place necessary to implement this, this agreement. So um, if, 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 the, if the price is to wait a bit, of course, we will wait with pleasure. Uh, on the um, circular economy, uh, as you know, also in the past, um, uh, this is uh, one of the uh, Slovenian uh, priorities also at the, at the national level. Uh, we will organize um, uh, events at the high uh, level um, at the, in Slovenia on, on this. Um, uh, it, but um, of course, this, this ties to other efforts uh, in green agenda and, and transition, uh, and we will continue working on, on this. Uh, and uh, but but mostly on the on the on the expert level, and we will discuss it. I think also at one of the environmental council towards the, the end of the year. Thank you. Very good. Um, I'll take now because we still have many questions. So I'll take three now, and they're shorter than some of the others. Um, <clears throat> the first comes from uh, Greg Nicholson, who is from a newspaper, Research Europe, and it's about um, HERA, which you mentioned in your introduction, the new health authority. And he's asking whether it will be up and running in time to have an impact on the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, so that's the one on Hera. Then we have uh, one question related to social aspects uh, from Michael Freitag, who is asking, what role do you see with regard to the debate about social Europe, um, the future of work, and promoting a more resilient labor markets, including the debate on the directive on adequate minimum wages? And the last one I will take for this round is from Lynn Fortin, who is asking, um, how would a failure to achieve an agreement on the future uh, cap under the current presidency impact priorities in that area. So CAP, social, and uh, HERA. You're muted. Apologize. No problem. So Thanks. On, on HERA, um, of course, this is, um, it is, we are waiting again for the uh, proposal, but I know that the commission is working very hard on this. We would like as a, as a presidency and also as a member state uh, that this is an ambitious institution uh, which uh, would include its own uh, research and development capacities um, as well as the uh, manufacturing infrastructure at the EU level 
uh, of course, um, in a coordination with the member states and, and, and stakeholders uh, to facilitate the, the production and, and, and uh, non-profit public activity when necessary. Uh, it should encompass uh, also the capabilities to, to uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to devote the necessary time to coordination of research. So we see, we see this institution as, as something uh, similar what the, the, perhaps the United States uh, is having, but of course uh, uh, being organized differently uh, due to the specificities of the European Union. But yeah, this is, this is I think, uh, uh, one of the uh, key institutions uh, if you want to have really a uh, functioning uh, European Health Union. Whether it will uh, come in time, uh, as I said before, we are working very hard uh, together already with the previous, and uh, I mean, with the, with the present presidency and with the, with the next one to really conclude as soon as possible work on EMA, ECDC, and dossier on cross-border effects. And we will really focus all our efforts at the working level to, to bring this file as, as, as much as possible to a general approach, at least in the, in the council, if, if possible. So very, very, very important uh, file. Uh, on, the, uh, on the CAP, on, pardon, on the on the uh, on the social Europe um, again important issue. We have uh, been congratulating very recently the Portuguese for a very successful uh, summit in Porto and the and the declaration uh, that that was that meant a lot to Portuguese, but also to to uh, to other member states. Also, this crisis showed that without uh, uh, sufficient uh, social network uh, and, 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 and schemes in place, uh, including uh, ones like SURE and so the European Union member states would not be functioning and would not be uh, a feed for the exit of the economic crisis as they are now. So very important issue. Uh, on uh, minimum wage directive, as, as you know, uh, this is, um, this is a complicated issue because uh, uh, many member states have, have different view on this issue. Slovenia uh, is, of course, uh, amongst the countries uh, which uh, who would like to have a, um, a European agreement on, on this, uh, but um, countries are coming from different uh, uh, political and social background. We, as such, we will strive to achieve the greatest possible uh, progress on the minimum wage uh, directive, on the pay transparency directive. Uh, we, are, we, we are ambitious on both files, but um, of course we, we, we also want to, to have uh, or to, to give member states enough time to, uh, to reach a good compromise and, and broad political support is necessary. Uh, so, um, Again, very, very, very difficult and complicated issue. I, I, uh, we will do utmost, but, but um, we'll see what the, uh, what the outcome will be. But very important, we are planning an informal meeting on of employment and social affairs. Uh, in the context, in that context, with the uh, uh, Western Balkans, uh, informal meeting. Uh, with a special emphasis on the youth unemployment, and that's that uh, we think it's 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 very important, uh, also in relation to the, the demographic issues in in our region. So that is uh, that is one of the key issues. Um, and the last uh, question I think was the common agriculture policy. Uh, I must I I was as, as you know I was working in the agriculture for. Uh, a few years and, and of course um, every decade or, or so the new uh, reform is coming and, and, and I think this um, in order to adapt the agriculture policies to uh, new challenges uh, um, especially to, uh, to green and digital agenda when it comes to this but also to 
uh, needs of agriculture to 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 be uh, a multifunctional service for uh, for the uh, for the for the for the societies. Uh, so, I think um, as far as I understood the uh, the uh, the um, um, agriculture. Uh, uh, reform is is still to be resolved. It's 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 very difficult now uh, um, uh, between twenty seven member states and also European Parliament. Uh, so hopefully, uh, uh, Portuguese will will do it, and we will we will work on this. Um, but we have other important issues like European uh, Green Deal and uh, Farm to Fork strategy. Uh, so a lot, and of course, it's it's not mentioned here. Um, uh, also, was I did mention it also there will be a lots of uh, of course um, negotiation ne necessary also in the field of fisheries over the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me take uh, three more uh, related to three issues: one, uh, UK; the second, uh, green agenda; and uh, and and something related to uh, cancer. Let me start with the UK, which is coming from Pilar Lotterie Poirot, who is asking what specific issues, priorities are there in relation to the EU-UK relations? Uh, with respect to uh, cancer, there are two questions. I'll put them together. One from Salvatore Ricci, who is asking um, what the Slovenian priorities will be with respect to the beating cancer plan, whether it, uh, the presidency will deliver concrete changes, um, uh, and or leave this to the French presidency and again related to um, to uh, to uh, to cancer there's a question from Wendy Yaret from the Association of European Cancer Leagues uh, with an increasing old population the number of cancer diagnoses increases what is the intention that the presidency intends to pose on cancer related issues so two questions related to uh, cancer and then um, you referred to it also in uh, earlier uh, green agenda. Clemence uh, Privin is asking what the parties will be in terms of the green agenda. And um, there is uh, also, let me find it now. There's another one with respect to the green agenda, which I have lost because there's so many questions. So it is about what the concrete priorities are in the green agenda. So if we can take these um, three issues, that would be great. Thank you very much. Uh, on the UK uh, EU relations, uh, that is, uh, of course, very uh, sensitive issue. And uh, Slovenia would like to contribute, uh, first of all, uh, to um, good and 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 uh, um, uh, effective implementation of the of the uh, two agreements um, that we think it's 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 uh, necessary from both sides agreements have been uh, put in force and and, and uh, just at the last european council uh, uh, the leaders were discussing the necessity to uh, to have uh, um, um, Correct and 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 um, a good implementation of the of of these um, uh, two agreements, withdrawal agreement and, and trade agreement, trade cooperation agreement. Uh, the the other issue, of course, it's very important is the principle of unity. Uh, we will work on 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 of course on the consensual level uh, among the member states. It's very important that we understand each other. And we preserve the unity uh, uh, when it comes uh, to these issues, and have as uh, as much as strong um, uh, coordination necessary. We 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 have a, a, a good team on this dossier. Uh, we are working closely with the Commission on this issue, with the member states, with PEC when necessary. So we hopefully uh, uh, we will be uh, having this year. A kinds of uh, uh, year where, where the implementation of, of, of two agreements uh, will be in a uh, full fledged. If not, then of course uh, uh, we will be looking ways how to address these issues. I know the Commission is, is already uh, is already um, 
discussing with, with amongst themselves, with the member states, uh, different um, uh, also possible scenarios to address uh, problems if uh, they would uh, they would come out uh, on the uh, on the, uh, the green uh, agenda or fit for 55 of course this is a very uh, very uh, difficult and sensitive issues for all member states uh, uh, and uh, we are in a different uh, position and national situations. Um, the, of course, it's very much depends how the how the um, how the uh, 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 the Commission will will and uh, prepare the dossiers and and what kind of dossiers would would come out, but. Um, um, our goals are um, as following so to. Uh, contribute to fast uh, uh, work in the working level on, on different dossiers. Uh, we will get 10 now in July and, 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 and hopefully two towards the end of, of, of this year. Uh, we will stri strive for coherent and uh, comprehensive approach in different council formats and, and to look at the uh, issues uh, from the horizontal point of view. That includes uh, environment, uh, TT, transport, and, and energy, uh, but also uh, competition in agro uh, agrofish. Uh, we will, of course, uh, organize a discussion if, if in Corepair if needed on uh, to give um, uh, some horizontal uh, uh, um, uh, input. Um, our aim is to present uh, progress reports uh, for the files. Uh, uh, in the quarter one, and uh, also then at the December council meetings. What is also very important in in the field or uh, in this field is, of course, to um, we will be uh, contributing to preparations for the COP twenty six in November in Glasgow, uh, and uh, and of course, uh, last but not least. Um, uh, there will be a, a, a conference on biodiversity COP15 in China in the uh, second half of October. That's another important task in, in this regard. Uh, so, um, as, as, I, as I said before, we will be working on, 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 um, on these files, which are coming in a different council formats, and, and try to prepare uh, as much as possible and, and try to bring the dossiers as much as possible advance. Uh, on the cancer, uh, this is a very important um, issue in the, uh, uh, and, and, and challenge for all societies. Um, we will organize in Slovenia a high level conference uh, to commemorate 10 years of action plan. Uh, we are also planning conclusions in the, in the health council uh, and uh, of course, uh, um, uh, we will we will organize debate on the implementation of the action plan. So uh, difficult, uh, challenging, challenging issue, and uh, for all societies. Uh, uh, so yes, uh, again, again, uh, um, a priority fight. Thank you. Very good. Um, I'm conscious of the time, so I'll take two more questions. And if you allow, also add one question on my own. Um, so the first one uh, relates to um, uh, to uh, European Child Guarantee. It comes from Ellie Dunhill, who is asking what the plans are of the presidency to engage with the European Child Guarantee proposal and the EU strategy on the rights of the child. That comes from Ellie Dunhill. And then there's a question from Beriva uh, Ongur. I hope I have not... Uh, uh, mispronounced uh, your name too much. He's asking, how does the Slovenian fall in the ranking of the 2021 World Press Freedom in Index affect the credibility of the presidency when it comes to the issues of European common values, democracy, and the rule of law? And then the final question coming from me relates to a subject which you um, mentioned as the second um, priority when you introduced uh, the Slovenia priorities, um, which was the Conference on the Future of Europe. Um, there was no question to it, so I thought I'll uh, pick up one question. 
Um, and um, we all know that a special attention will be devoted to this process. Um, and in the, um, pres on the presidency website, it says that uh, uh, the presidency will ensure, I'm quoting, ensure that the council and the member states will have an appropriate role in this process. And I would like to hear what you mean by that, because um, the council is, uh, and the member states, are having a role to play in the executive board, in the plenary. Um, and um, so what actually do we mean when we say an appropriate role for the council member states and how does that affect the role of citizens and then also the overall outcome, which we all know shall be a joint report to the joint presidency. We don't know exactly what it will look like because we're still in the beginning of the process, but how will it affect, um, what effect will it have that you will devote a lot attention to the appropriate role for the council and the member states on the final outcome and to the and with respect to the citizens input which will be given um, at the transnational but also at the national level with respect to all these panels which will be happening so these are the three final questions uh, for the remaining minutes we have please the conference on uh, future of europe um what I meant to say is that, of course, our prime minister uh, will be a member of the presidency of the conference and state secretary will be a member of the, of the executive uh, uh, board. And of course, it's very important that uh, Slovenia will play uh, an important role in the, in the sense of rotating presidency uh, as, a, as a relay also to the member states. So to coordinate, um, 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 uh, also the, the, the work in this regard in the council. Very important task would be to inform the, uh, would be a permanent uh, information flow uh, and would be of course also reporting to, to different council formats, especially Coreper and GIC on, on, uh, on, this, uh, on this issue, on these events. Um, and, and when you mentioned um, citizens, of course, uh, it's up to the member states, but uh, Slovenia, as I said, as I said, will organize back home a series of events, um, uh, including those, uh, of course, and especially most important with, uh, with, uh, with the citizens. Um, and we will try to foster an uh, inclusive debate on, on on all uh, uh, issues which are important, uh, we think uh, for the for the uh, for the citizens, and 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 that might encompasses the uh, the present uh, crisis and and past crisis, but also the way how to uh, uh, address them. So this is um, uh, this is this is how we see our role, and and of course um, somehow we will have to also uh, also also uh, encompasses. Uh, uh, also encompasses this uh, uh, within the report, uh, probably which will um, uh, come towards the end of, of this year. On the uh, in the field of uh, children rights, and uh, uh, we will address the EU strategy on the rights of of, of the child, and and uh, uh, especially when it comes to child abuse online, and this is a, a priority. And as I said. Uh, we will um, organize also um, a conference on 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 um, high level uh, concerning this um, um, issue of of um, uh, different offenses on on internet, and uh, we are also uh, plan to cooperate uh, more intensively with uh, with uh, uh, Western Balkan countries on these issues, and Western Balkan countries will be invited to uh, to uh, to this um, uh, uh, meeting uh, so that is but of course uh, um, if there are more uh, detailed questions and and so we could we could of course provide uh, also more concrete um, concrete uh, uh, answer so I think that that would be uh, from from my side at the moment, of course, as, as you see, uh, as you know, and as you see, there are there are many priority uh, dossiers in in different fields. Uh, we know that our work um, uh, load is, 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 is it's a heavy one, uh, but um, we think that we have um, a, a good stuff here, which would contribute to, as as I said in the beginning, to uh, to be to promote the advancement of of files. Uh, uh, 
to to next stages and uh, uh, we are doing this uh, in in uh, in uh, with the, with the really interest uh, to to be an honest and uh, efficient and pragmatic uh, broker thank you um, to conclude uh, today's event i'll do three things uh, first i'll i hope we haven't lost you uh, ambassador Dark. We don't see you, but I'll do three things. One is to uh, family video. Good, we uh -huh. can hear you. Uh, yeah. To say um, sorry to all those who um, whose questions I have not been able to transfer. But uh, if you wish, we as EPC can uh, take up your question and uh, confer it to the uh, permanent representation. So sorry for those which I haven't been able to mention. The second thing is to say uh, thank you. Thank you to Ambassador Jark for uh, being with us today, for taking the time. We know how full your schedule is just ahead of the presidency, but also to say thanks um, to all those who have joined us online for this event and to all those which have uh, engaged in our debate. And the final thing is to wish you all the best, um, to wish the presidency um, all the best uh, over the upcoming six months, all the success, but because um, the more successful you will be, the best it will be also from our perspective, from everyone's perspective, because it will mean that we have progressed at the European level. So thanks to all of you. I wish you a um, happy uh, remaining afternoon and looking forward to see you again soon. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Ambassador. Bye.